Good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, if you're in Iceland, I guess. Good evening, if you're in Europe or, or further points east. Uh, welcome to Hyperledger Global Forum 2021. We have an amazing set of uh, content, amazing set of couple of days here uh, to be able to gather and talk about all the different parts of the Hyperledger community, both the technology side, the deployments that are happening out there in the real world, the things that are possible. Uh, we have uh, uh, an amazing lineup of speakers as well. Before we dive into all of that, I'd like to thank uh, our sponsors uh, with a special thank you to the Diamond sponsors, Accenture and IBM, as well as our Platinum sponsors, the Filecoin Foundation, Hitachi, Siemens, and Zulig Pharma. Uh, all of these companies have come together to help uh, deliver the content, deliver this amazing event for all of you. Uh, and thank you to all of you for showing up, for carving time out of your day, uh, and for joining in this conversation. Um, it's been quite a year since we last met. It's been about 15 months, actually. I, if I can get to my first slide, please. Um, uh, it's uh, it's hard to re remember it because it feels like a decade ago, but in March uh, of 2020, early March of 2020, we gathered at the Corona Ranch to uh, for Hyperledger Global Forum uh, 2020 uh, to celebrate, just like here, three days of content uh, about our community, uh, to get to meet each other, to, to um, share uh, tacos and uh, uh, drink margaritas uh, under, under, under a starry sky. Um, in that time, a lot has changed. Uh, that very week, I remember stepping on the plane home, actually, uh, telling a friend uh, that, you know, I think I'm going to head home and not leave the house for about a year. Uh, and I thought I was joking, um, but I might have been more right than I than I realized. Um, you know, and we went through a period there where I, I and, and many of us are still there, in fact, here on Zoom, where, you know, suddenly we found our world collapse uh, to, to, to really staring and engaging with each other through Zoom calls, through I, I, I through the same kind of tools that open source communities have always used, which is a good thing, but not having the opportunity to share tacos and beer under a sky. Uh, but really, though, our community persisted. Our community, you know, with the bonds that we had built were solid enough that when we came together and realized that there was a major crisis at hand, many of us realized that the technologies we had been working together to build for the last four years might actually suddenly have some relevancy uh, in the fight against this, this brand new threat, against the pandemic. So many of you worked together and, and worked to create something called the Trust Your Supplier Network, which started to provide traceability in the delivery of personal protective equipment uh, and, and help new buyers and new sellers uh, build reputations to be able to trust each other and, and start work. Others built data sharing networks like the MePasa network that was built to, to share data about the spread of COVID and uh, genetic information about it and, and, and other things to help organize those efforts, even all the way up to the, the, the US government and other national levels. Um, others started to ask, could we use these technologies to build traceability mechanisms in the pharmaceutical supply chain, uh, or even in the deployment of verifi verifiable credentials, uh, uh, you know, which our community has long pioneered uh, to help reopen borders through the use of uh, portable proof of vaccination status. Uh, and you'll hear a lot more about all those different topics at the rest of the event uh, today. Um, there's so many ways in which our community responded, and I'm so proud of all of the work that many of you have done. And and others to, to go and respond to these immense challenges. Uh, and, and the good news is that coming out of uh, this crisis from the last year, not only has the, the economy started to recover, and in some cases it's booming back, and we see even supply chain shortages elsewhere, um, it's pretty clear that the enterprise uh, software industry as a whole is, is also healthy, um, and in particular, the need for enterprise blockchain continues to be strong. PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, released a report at the end of last year based on surveys conducted during 2020, where they asked uh, uh, executives, CEOs, you know, how much uh, do you plan to deploy this? How important is this to you? And by their estimates, we will still see uh, by 2030, uh, enterprise blockchain technology have an impact at the level of $2 trillion in added value to the global economy. Um, hard to tell what's going to happen sometimes next week, let alone next month. But um, uh, the, the trend lines that they see, the, the sentiment that they pick up on, 
on is is still completely solid on on this front which is great to see they even predict that by 2025 most businesses will be using blockchain technology and this doesn't surprise me because every business has a supply chain every business has payments that flow in or out of that business uh every every business deals with identity of itself or its customers so not a surprise at all to see those kinds of numbers um deloitte back to that uh, up as well in the, a continuation of this survey they've done now for three years talking to the c-suite about you know how confident are you in this technology how much how, where does it sit in your list of organizational priorities um uh, is there too much hype in this sector which they certainly agreed even in 2020 there is more hype uh, than in previous years but all of them saw increasing confidence that this is an important technology they're going to continue to build on it uh it's transitioning from r d to pilot to now something ready uh, in production and we know that we're starting to see industries where by mandate you'll have to start to be on these networks in order to to do regulatory reporting in order to participate in the traceability some traceability mechanism and in fact key to some meeting so many of the sdgs i uh, i believe is the use of uh, of distributed ledger technology and it looks like quite a few people are humming along with that as well. It was nice to see PricewaterhouseCoopers also identify the three key areas where uh, uh, we've seen our own community deploy real production systems. Uh, I'd love to go into more depth on these. You'll hear a lot more about these through the rest of the uh, of the week. Uh, but I, I, I just to give the highlights in central bank digital currencies, a, a, a hot um, headline centered place. You'll hear a, a presentation from Accenture uh, later today, I believe, on on central bank digital currencies uh, and the work they're doing. We heard last segment actually earlier uh, this morning from uh, uh, Her Excellency Suray Che, who's the head of the uh, Assistant Governor for the National Bank of Cambodia on Project Back Hong, with it, which they've deployed. But we've seen similar projects in Thailand, in the Caribbean, uh, also using hyperledger technologies, two different ones actually, Bezu and Fabric. Um, lots of other initiatives out there touching this space. Stay tuned, this is, this is really hot. But in other domains of financial services as well, blockchain technology partners deployed a uh, a, a, a core system for the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, for the exchange of uh, securities on that platform, on top of Hyperledger Sawtooth, bondy value with bond exchange uh, markets. We know that there's a lot of activity going on here. The second main area is in provenance tracking, generally speaking, which includes supply chain, but also includes things like intellectual property, right? There's a supply chain of intellectual property, whether it's patents or copyright, knowing where this stuff came from is important. Um, and there, of course, we see companies companies like Walmart uh, reinventing how their own supply chains work through the use of this technology, through food trust and other networks they've set up. Uh, startups like we.trade uh, that are, are connecting those kinds of supply chain information to trade finance networks to, to make the flow of goods and finance in both directions much more efficient. Both of those organizations using Hyperledger Fabric at the core of what they do. Companies like Ledger Domain uh, looking at traceability in the pharmaceutical supply chain and also building on top of Hyperledger technologies. Uh, and we think this is a key part to reopening society, to uh, dealing with the supply chain crunch that we all have, but reintroducing trust into our markets. Uh, uh, and then finally, in the realm of digital identity, not to say finally, like these are the only three, uh, to be clear, but these are the three that have had, uh, I think, the biggest uh, collections of use cases underneath them. We continue to see organizations, uh, both the uh, Bonafide, which is an organization serving the needs of credit unions in the United States, SecureKey with their verified me network, um, obviously our longstanding friends in the uh, government of British Columbia who have deployed self-sovereign ID network for businesses and business owners uh, there. But all of these have been kind of flags in the ground for what uh, really has been some interest in this domain from those looking to reopen borders through the use of proofs of test results and vaccination status. We'll hear a lot more about that uh, from uh, uh, Marie Mastery from IATA uh, coming up tomorrow. So be sure and try to uh, catch that or, or catch it on the replay. But um, really exciting things going on in this domain, so core to reforming the way that the world works. Um, and while there is no, as I've said before on the stage at uh, Hyperledger Global Forum, there is no coin market cap uh, for us to track the deployments of all these different projects to 10 decimal points. Um, there is uh, the Forbes Blockchain 50, uh, which is an incredible resource for understanding how are the 50 largest companies who are using blockchain technology, how are they using it, what are they using? 
It turns out 30 of those 50 uh, uh, are using Hyperledger technologies, lots of fabric, but lots of use of the other technologies within the Hyperledger greenhouse as well. Uh, and it's really been great uh, to watch that track uh, over time. In fact, we'll have the, the uh, Michael Del Castillo uh, uh, appearing uh, uh, on tomorrow during the Asia segment, I'm sorry, on, on uh, Thursday during the Asia segment with a number of the uh, companies represented in the index talking about the work that they're doing. Um, so be sure and come for that. For this con conference, uh, we've put together more than 100 hours of panels, demos, and other sessions across two different segments. You're joining us here for the second segment. Maybe you were there for segment one as well, and you saw these same slides. I, 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 I'm giving the same opening in both segments to make sure we address the full global audience. Arno as well uh, is, is talking to both, but we have unique content otherwise in all the different segments from the keynotes to the different sessions. So it might be late night, feel free to show up in your pajamas uh, or uh, uh, you know, over the dinner table, whatever time zone map, but we'd really love to have you uh, attend as many of these sessions as you can. Because um, they, they came from all, all different places. We had uh, six of them are actually in Chinese, which is a great uh, way of kind of illustrating the, the global nature of what we're building. We also have a very diverse set of both speakers and attendees. Uh, uh, it's never enough to say we've got 21, 20% uh, 20 female uh, participa participants and speakers. We, it, 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 you know, it's like what Ruth Bader Ginsburg said when she asked how many women there should be on the Supreme Court. She said all of them. Um, but I, 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 we are we sincerely work hard to make sure that this reflects the full diversity, not only of our community but of the society that we are serving. So thank you to the program committee for helping make this an amazing uh, collection of content. Um, we uh, just to give you a little bit of a preview. There are you'll hear from so many of these global brands on stage. I, I uh, but I'll, <clears throat> it's also the startups that are in our community that really have a, a huge impact on the adoption of our technology. During the last segment, we had a panel on CBDCs. Be sure and catch it on the replay. Today, you're going to hear from Arno Leors, uh, who will tell us more about the, the technical, uh, an update from the Technical Steering Committee and what's going on in our community that's so uh, intense and interesting. Then you'll hear from, uh, actually, I have these out of order slightly, sorry. Uh, um, uh, then you'll hear from David Treat. Sorry, did I skip over? Um, David, you'll hear then from David Treat uh, from Accenture, uh, uh, who'll uh, be telling us about the work that they're doing. Uh, and then uh, finally, from Frank Giannis, who uh, is with the FDA. And I'll give them all introductions when I uh, get to their points, but my key message is stay tuned. Uh, there's a few last pointers <clears throat> I want to uh, just mention before I, I break away to Arno. Uh, first, um, be sure and join the virtual hallway track in Gathertown. Uh, this is where, uh, you know, the informal conversations that make these events so fun and so meaningful. Uh, uh, you know, we felt we needed to provide a vehicle for that. <clears throat> and that's what we uh, have there at Gathertown. There's a link in Hoppin to be able to get to that. During the breaks, be sure and also check out the net networking feature and hop in to get to know other people in the community. This is a chance for one-on-one -on -one connections to be made around different themes, around different ideas, or just, you know, feel free to stumble in and meet someone new. Be sure and claim your $25 Kiva credit uh, that you get as an attendee. That's, there's a limited number of those, so don't wait on that uh, uh, so that you can claim them all. Um, and then just before tomorrow's uh, morning's segment two, there's a boff from the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, which is a going to be going to to be really interesting. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to seeing many of you there. Um, and finally, on Friday, there's a, a side event called the Firefly at Hyperledger Day, which all of you are invited to attend as well. Sorry for that pl uh, plug. We just really wanted to make sure everyone knew about these things. Um, the links to everything above are in Hopin. Uh, I, and so um, I do also want to emphasize all are welcome in the Hyperledger community. Uh, we mean that. Uh, we we want to make sure that that uh, there's never a barrier to participation uh, for reasons that are sometimes hard to see when you're in the middle of, of things in an open source project. We have a code of conduct that applies not only to our projects, but also to this event. Um, we intend to make this inclusive. If there's anything you see uh, or anything we do inadvertently or another participant that uh, you need uh, somebody to pay some attention to, please let us know. There's a link to the code of conduct on the website uh, and, and throughout the event. So very happy to, to, to engage in that front. Um, with that, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Arno uh, Lehors, 
Arno is a senior member of the senior technical staff for uh, with IBM. He's also uh, been the chair of the technical steering committee for, for quite some time now. Uh, and uh, he uh, is a presence across the whole of the Hyperledger community, really helping make sure that our technology is solid, our, but really that the communities that are working together uh, are both successfully working amongst themselves, but then across uh, those project boundaries under the greenhouse as well. So with that, let me welcome Arno to the stage.